Let's just go. Where you where you guys been? Where you guys been? You ain't been here? I've been here. You ain't been here. What is going on guys? Welcome back. I am doing another tutorial for you today. But before I get into the tutorial, I want to talk about a few things. Let's let's talk about some of the places that I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be in Las Vegas in the beginning of August. Uh, at the end of August, I'm going to be in Texas for TAOM. I'm going to be lecturing out there. Also, I'm working on a few projects. Some of them are kind of big and, and I'm excited about. Some of you have seen already. If you've been around, I've kind of done one or two other things. But I'm going to be releasing a quick card appearance that I think is kind of funky. And I've also uh, made a few t-shirts. So here's the quick question. Are you Team Marla or Team Vernon? The choice is yours. Yours to make. And if you want to make a choice, you can do that by supporting me and buying some of the shirts in the links below. I got some other designs there too. I want to be adding them from time to time. I'm kind of enjoying designing funky magic t-shirts and I want to start integrating some stuff. Listen, if you like what I'm doing, guys, just you know hit that like button, subscribe if you want. I appreciate all of it. And let's get into the tutorial right now. Let's do that now. All right, so I'm gonna be doing the tutorial from this angle. So let's start with the grip. The grip is gonna be pretty much a standard mechanics grip in the beginning, and then we're gonna change. So we're gonna go from this grip into this grip, which is a little weird, but you can see I'm holding a brake here now instead of here. So that's gonna be pretty important to do this move. Let's start with a pinky brake somewhere. Let's do it above a different card. <laughs> there we go. So we'll do it above this card right here. Okay, so I have a pinky break. So from here, I'm going to transfer the break from my pinky to my thumb. And here's how you do it. You're going to lift up with the ring finger and pinky just a little bit. And then that's going to kick this whole packet over to your thumb. Now you're going to push down with your thumb into the fat of the thumb. Now this is going to be pretty hard to show because of uh, the ring. Actually, I'll take this off. This is where you are. Now from here, this is where it gets pretty tricky because this is going to be super hard to show slow, but I'll do the best I can. From this break, your pinky is going to go underneath the packet and then your thumb is going to do this. You're going to pull back with your thumb. And that's pretty much what happens. Now you see how this split and spread? That's because uh, I'm doing it slow. So this is what happens when it's fast, right? See, it pretty much stays together. But when you do it slow, right, it's, it splits. It's because I'm squeezing here with my thumb, which is why it's so hard. So just bear that in mind while I'm doing this tutorial, that it's going to be hard for me to show you exactly how it's going to look slow. But if you follow along, you'll kind of get the gist of it card here you're going to hold a break on the pinky the pinky is going to transfer that to the thumb and push down pinky is going to go underneath the pack and now you're going to extend your hand open that's going to make that packet open like that and now you just relax the hand and everything goes back into mechanics grip just like that so let me try to do it from a front angle for you. So same type of thing. Card's gonna go pinky break into a thumb grip, fat grip. I don't know what to call this. Maybe like an Altman trap. And now you pull back and open. It's super hard to see from this angle because the hand is covering a lot, but you can see that you can, you can still do it there. How, how would you use this thing? Actually, you know, before we get into how to use it, let's talk a little bit about when to use it. So this is a, a pass, a one-handed shift, really. So, I mean, if you're gonna use misdirection, you can do that, but it's still gonna be a really big motion because you see how that packet flips up right there. Like when this is like that, it's super hard to hide that moment, which is why I kind of use it more as a fidgety move. Plus there's noise. I don't know if you can hear that, it's the noise which is another reason why I don't like using it a lot of time because of that noise. Let me talk to you about a different way to do it. So this is the way I do it, mostly because uh, it's more comfortable for me and I feel like I have more control for some reason. It's a little slower. This way is much faster, but if you're willing to cut the speed, you can get a little bit more control. And here's how 
instead of that pinky going underneath after you transfer the brake to here when you transfer this brake instead the pinky goes into a straddle grip and now you do that right so if you can get a brake from let's say here transfer that over and then do that right i don't know i feel like i have more control that way it does cut down the speed a little bit but i like the way it feels better with the pinky just because i feel like i have a lot more control with at least one of the packets one packet i can't do anything about. this packet by my thumb i just can't do anything about it. it's always going to have that limitation you see <laughs> once you stop midway it just splits open let me see if i could okay so you see what i'm saying i think it just always splits which is why speed is important with this if you can do it with some speed you can use this thing so how would i actually use this move well that's kind of tricky because this is not really a i would say a uh, super kind of close-up move if you see a lot of the magic that i do put my ring back on <laughs> So if you see a lot of the magic that I do, it's super close up, kind of like in a one space area. There's no way you can do that with this move. Like, unless you do something like that, which is really weird, in my opinion, if you come across, you know, like a one-handed shift, I don't know, into a cover pass. I think it's pretty stupid. This is a move that's really done with a lot of motion. If I'm going to, let's say, have somebody walk across, you know, just take a card. Okay, don't forget the card. Just remember that, and as I do that, I get my break. I said, you know what, can you just come step over here for a second? And I kind of pull them across and you do the pass that way. Then it can be a, an effective thing. So as you go to reach for somebody, you know, say, you know what, can you come stand over here, please? You can do the pass that way. Or you can reach behind somebody. And as you reach behind them, you do the same sort of thing. So you say, you know what, why don't you come step over here for a second and you move them. And as you move them, you eventually bring this behind their back. So if their back is here, you're just gonna kind of do the pass here and then move them, right? Uh, so that's a that's another way you can do it. Personally, I, I don't think there's many times that you would necessarily need to do a specific one-handed shift. I think it's just a cool move to, to learn. I think it's interesting to learn the dynamic of when to use it and how to use it. But I do think there are much better uh, passes out there or shifts or controls out there than this one-handed shift here. I, I just think there are. If you wanna go ahead and learn, I, I encourage you to learn it. I, I think everybody should learn as much as they can about these shifts, please do. And, and tell me what you think or, or don't think about it. Maybe you know something I don't about this move. I haven't looked too much into it. I pretty much just learned the mechanics. So please understand that. I'm not sitting here teaching you the history of everything in this move. I'm just teaching you this move. And that's about it. I first learned it as a Paul Curry shift. I found out later it was a Vernon thing. But, you know, maybe you know more about it. Maybe you know how to use it in a close-up situation that doesn't involve one of these kind of weird things, which I think is ridiculous. I've seen people try to do that. You know, ugh, it just looks bad. Like, oh, let's just, you know, just do something else. But other than that, it's a very, it's a very dependent move on a lot of cover. So the way this move works is by being in a stationary position, moving something around and then staying in that stationary position. So if I come here and I grab something, I'm still in that kind of position that I was in before, right? So I can come here, position and change. Now I'm going a little bit high, but if I was wearing a jacket, it would be perfect. I could just come up here, do this, right? And you wouldn't see anything, it would be great. But that's about it, that's all I can show you about that move. Take your time with it, it's not easy, it's very knacky. Make sure you get that flesh break in there, bring your your thumb back, and, and that's it, that's all there is. Play with it in a straddle too, it's a weird thing. I, t I tend to notice, <laughs> if you look at my pinky, when I do this, I tend to flare out my pinky, then go underneath, do the move, and then flare it back out to bring it out. It's always something that bothered me. So, you know, like I, I, I just can't, for some reason go from here underneath the deck without pulling a card i think that's just a personal issue to be honest all right guys that's that's it that's the one-handed pass i originally learned it from a paul curry thing that somebody told me it's a vernon thing whatever you want to do whatever you want to call it i learned it from paul curry it's a vernon thing it's a vernon it's a one-handed pass it's not something you're going to do all the time i tend to use it more as a fidget move like i said before you know in the right circumstance you could do some pretty dope stuff with it i think and just you know in, in the description below just tell me why you would use a one-handed pass or if you don't think there's a need for one because 
Maybe there isn't, but I learned it anyway. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for hanging out. Peace out.